Let's do some cropping and enhancing of photos really quick because when you're shooting insects, a lot of time it's a good idea to really punch in and see the detail. First up, we'll start with this silver beetle. Now, I was real happy with this image and I'll bypass right through the quick develop settings and go into the develop module. As we take a look at this image, it's helpful to zoom in on the critical area. And you'll notice that this became a bit of an inadvertent self-portrait. This highly metallic beetle reflected me back here. So in the future, I probably would use a self-timer and step away from the camera to try to minimize the reflection. But that's okay. In a way, I kind of like that it's a really abstract self-portrait. All right, let's pull that back here for a second and work with the overall basic developing. Remember, you could take your white balance and find something that you feel should be white. Find something that's a little off, and if you click, it will shift. Now, this is ultimately up to you to determine what you feel is the white balance area, and it might be useful to zoom in a little bit. Remember, as you find these areas, it should have a color cast. That feels better to me there. Next, we'll take a look at the overall exposure. Now, I often find that auto exposure is not a bad place to start to see what the system thinks. Then I'll recover the highlights and potentially lift the shadows a little bit. In this case, the exposure is a little high, so I'm gonna pull that back down. Remember, if you hold down the Option key, you can see if you have any clipping areas, which we don't here. On a PC, just use the Alt key. Now, clarity could be useful to add some selective contrast. You note that the water droplets really become precise with a boost in clarity. But like all good things, don't overdo it. And a little boost to the vibrance. Let's pull back out and take a look at that overall image there. It feels pretty good. Looking at my histograms here, I could see what's going on. Remember, this is also an interactive histogram. So you can drag things around within that image if you feel like it's not quite right. This will make it simple to recover areas as well as lift other areas. So you feel that you've got a pretty good image. I like where that's going. It doesn't need to be completely balanced in the histogram because it is a relatively dark background. All right, let's scroll down here. I like where that is. I'm just gonna recover those highlights just a little more and play with the white value there. Bring that in a bit and a little more contrast back to the blacks. Feels pretty solid. As we continue to go down, we can now hide the histogram and take a look at some of the other controls. The tone curve makes it easy to add contrast and using the on image tool here, I like to just grab parts of the image. That allowed me to make the shadows a little darker and potentially grab the highlights and apply a slight lift. That feels pretty good and we'll continue. Next, we have the ability to go after individual colors. So if you feel that things aren't quite right, use this tool. For example, we can target the red here and using the luminance slider, I could lighten or darken that area so it feels about right. Now be careful if it picks up any spots. You might need to actually go over to those spots and pull those down too, but a little bit of texture in that leaf actually feels okay. Let's navigate down here to the orange, and I like the orange, but it's a little oversaturated for my taste. So I'll switch to the saturation tab and drag, and you see it pulls that down just a bit. This makes it a little less overwhelming and puts the attention back on the beetle. All right, that feels pretty good across the board. Looking at some of the greens, they're just a bit strong for my liking. So we'll take the on image tool and click over here in the greens and pull the saturation down just a bit. And while I'm at it, let's take the luminance and take that down and roll the hue slightly. You notice that we can make that more golden or a little more green. I think a slight boost there actually works well. All right, let's fit that back to the canvas, and I feel that that's pretty well developed. The last thing to work on is the detail area. So let's take a closer look at the image itself, and we'll set a point that we want to focus on. Looks pretty good, and I'll go to a one-to-one -one ratio here, and pan my image over. Remember, you can do that pretty quickly with the drag. And I like that, but I'll back off just slightly. This was a very shallow depth of field image here, so let's play with our sharpening just a little. Trying to really bring out the water beads. And let's increase the amount of detail. 
and the radius so it affects it. But then use masking. Remember, Alt or Option drag on the mask lets you limit it. In this case, I don't want to sharpen the background and add any details back there. So we'll pull this in so it's more limited on the beetle. And now that makes it a lot easier to just sharpen the water droplets and some of the ridges in the shell. Same thing on noise reduction. Let's just pull that down just a bit, but don't go too far or you start to remove important details. The background feels pretty good there. As we take a look at this image, let's just fit it to the screen. And the last thing I'm going to try is the lens profile. So we'll turn it on. And you see that the lens profile recognized that I had a Nikon lens on my body and that it was putting a little bit of extra vignetting at the corners. Well, I like that. Removing it looked pretty good. Got rid of the distractions there, and I'm happy. But the last thing I'm going to do is just make a small adjustment. Let's take the graduated filter here and put a little adjustment in this lower corner. That looks good. I've got the right area selected, but instead of brightening it, I just want to darken that down. That looks good to remove some of those distractions. And we'll also pull down the saturation in that corner. That feels about right. And let's reduce the clarity so it goes a bit softer. If you want to stylize that image, you could take advantage of any of the other standard things we have here. Remember, you do have a section just for effects, and perhaps a slight vignette at the edges would use the image well. All right, that feels good. Why don't we move on to processing one more image, and this time, a butterfly. In this case, we have a butterfly that gently landed. Let's zoom in to take a look, and it seems to me like we've got a nicely focused image. Some of my earlier images within the butterfly habitat were a bit impacted by fog, so I think this is a good image to work with. Let's take a look at the histogram, and you'll notice that the image is relatively underexposed. Now, that's okay. I shot slightly underexposed to shoot with a faster shutter, and in this case, we have a really dark background. So I'm just going to bring the shadows over a little bit to the right, and then grab those middle exposure details and lift. Now, as I do this, I could really start to make out the background, but that's not the goal, so let's actually pull that back a bit. I prefer things to be a bit darker back there, because it provides a really nice frame for the orange butterfly and gold flower. And looking at the highlights, I think we could tone those down, because it's really just bringing out the middle of the leaf, which isn't helping us much. All right, so highlights and whites go down. Let's play with the blacks just a little. I think that's pretty solid. Now, to really guide the viewer's eye, let's take advantage of the radial filter here for a second, and we'll click on our subject and draw. In this case, I've selected the area of the butterfly. Now, don't be surprised if it's got the wrong adjustments, but now it's really simple. We'll just pull the exposure down outside of the area of the butterfly, pulling in a bit of a lighting vignette. Once you've done this, I would strongly suggest that you feather it a bit. Remember, this will make a nice gradual transition between the areas. With that heavier feathering, you might find it useful to expand. And remember, you can rotate this if needed. So if you feel like it's not quite the right shape, you can rotate that into place until it masks out the area you want to work with. I like that. That feels good. With the radial vignette selected here, make sure you take a look at the controls. You select it by clicking on the center dot. Now, with the heavier feathering, it may have gone too far and it's blending in a bit. So you can always play with that feather, get it so it's about right, and then readjust the exposure. Again, we're going for just a slight darkening at the edges around the butterfly. All right, let's play with that overall setting. Pull the clarity down slightly so those Areas behind fall off, and it looks pretty good. Why don't we punch in one-to-one -one for a second and take a look at the butterfly details. Not bad. And we'll jump down to the details section. Let's apply a little bit of sharpening. Bring that up. And then pop the detail. Then holding down the option of the Alt key, back it off so the masking is ignoring the background and some of the flatter areas of color. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll pop that to one to three there. And I really like how the butterfly's popping. Feels like it's working well. Beyond this, 
just explore the image and decide if you need any overall noise reduction or any other adjustments. Now, be careful as you make these adjustments that you check, are you working with the selection or are you working with the entire image? In this case, I've got the radial filter selected. So I'll click outside of that to turn it off there. And by checking it, I'm now working with the entire image. This will make it a bit easier as you're making your adjustments to refine things like the overall exposure. This is making a global adjustment. So balance out those changes and consider slight clarity and whether or not you want to pop the colors. In this case, I like a really rich colored background and the butterflies coming through nicely. To refine this, we'll simply go into crop and let's change the aspect ratio to match our output. I'm going to go with a one by one crop in this case and just frame up that butterfly inside and we'll tighten the focus so that we really know what we're looking at. That feels solid. Press enter to apply and we'll just finish that with a slight darkening at the corners. Remember, everything's non-destructive, so if you change your mind and you decide that a 5x7 is more to your liking, the crop will adjust. And as you make those changes, everything will reflow. That actually feels a bit better to me, and I'm happy with the final image.